I'm Dr. Rich Minler, the fish vet, uh, veterinarian for fish. Um, so today we've got Ruby here. Uh, you can see it's actually a he rather than a she, I guess. When they're young, you can't really tell they're a he or a she. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll get back to it. Ruby here, as you can see, she's struggling with buoyancy disorder. Um, you can see that she's actually positively buoyant, which means that she's floating up to the surface. So if we wait a little bit and watch her, um, you can see that she does struggle a little bit. Uh, quite often, she's upside down on her back. Uh, she looks like she's half dead, but um, as you can see, they, they do struggle quite a bit. And having fish that are positively buoyant, it's going to um, wear them out a lot because they are fish, they live in water, they need to be in water, and they can't be exposed to the air. Uh, when they're exposed to the air, I guess there's uh, the risk of desiccation, which is pretty much like a third degree burn for fish, uh, as well as uh, becoming more in danger of becoming predated on by just uh, flying birds, uh, predatory aquatic birds that come to visit your pond. So uh, it's very essential that we do remove this excess air. With goldfish, if they're uh, physostomes, uh, so what that means is that they can actually gulp air uh, and to inflate the swim bladder or burp the air out to deflate it to, to, to help them with the buoyancy control, similar to the BCD of a diver. Um, and so there, there must be something that is wrong. Uh, it's very common uh, that it occurs with those uh, that are sort of a squashed type shape, the fan tails, the pearl scales, anything that are sort of squat. So it's quite uncommon uh, for a comet uh, that's a long body fish uh, to be affected by swim bladder disease. Uh, there's quite a lot of talk about feeding them extra fiber, maybe shelled peas. Uh, that is the, the theory behind that is to stimulate that uh, gastroesophageal sphincter uh, so that you can actually, the fish can actually uh, open and close uh, that little uh, stoma. Um, but I guess in this case, uh, it's got a lot of, it's been living in an outdoor pond, it's got a lot of vegetable material that it can eat, so uh, maybe that theory may not ring true. So uh, the best that we can do now is to actually uh, try to remove that excess gas from it. So I'm just going to uh, put him into an anesthetic solution, uh, which is our Faxalone, and then we'll keep talking about uh, the Ruby's condition. Okay, so we put Ruby in a uh, anesthetic solution. Uh, we put the lid on in case it goes through excitatory phase. Uh, she was quite uh, a struggler um, and quite active in trying to get out. Actually, yes, we had already established Ruby is a guy, uh, so we'll, we'll start calling Ruby him and, uh, from now on. Anyway, uh, let's get back to it. So you can see uh, this. Fish, Ruby, he has been floating upside down and struggling with buoyancy for quite a long time. Uh, and if I show you the, his spine, you can see it is uh, a little bit deformed uh, just because he's trying to, uh, I guess, trying the best he can to, to rectify the situation, to adapt uh, to this new buoyancy um, or lack of buoyancy control. Um, so that, that is, I guess, a chronic uh, thing. Uh, you can see the spine is just, it's got quite significant curvature to the spine. So we'll wait till he is uh, anesthetized. This is, uh, we're going to put a needle in, which is going to be uh, quite uh, an invasive procedure. So that's why we always need to use anesthetics. And again, to judge whether the anesthetic is uh, of whether he's sufficiently uh, sedated and anesthetized. Uh, you do the pinch test of, of the tail, and the tail face. Uh, you can see he's re responding to that, so we'll wait a little bit longer. Uh, while we're waiting, I just thought I'll show you uh, the equipment uh, that we need. So basically, uh, what we need, I guess this is just a syringe to, uh, to irrigate the gills with either anesthetic water or, or fresh water. Uh, we've also got a syringe uh, that we can actually withdraw um, the gas out. Uh, we've got a needle, so here I'm just using a 22 gauge, um, one and a half inch, because I, I like to have the extra length um, to, to get to the swim bladder. 
Um, most people just do with just these two equipment, that, that's, that's enough. Uh, but sometimes uh, if, if, if you want to, uh, in this case, we want to try and get the, the buoyancy exactly right. Uh, what I like to do is I like to attach the needle uh, to a flexible uh, tube. Uh, this is a three-way tap. It doesn't have to be a three-way tap, uh, but you can do that. And then you stick your your syringe uh, to the end of that. So we just show you how we attach them together. So that's your needle end. And then we'll just unscrew. We can take that. Unscrew that and stick your syringe the end of that. Okay. So let's see if Ruby is sufficiently anesthetized. Uh, we can't rush the anesthetic. If you put too much, it will go too deep uh, and you spend a long time trying to revive them. So you can see, you can actually gauge like how much air you need to take out uh, roughly by pushing down on it. You can see it's only slightly positively buoyant, so it doesn't shoot up to the surface like a balloon. So we just need to take, I would estimate, probably about maybe two, three mils of air out of the swim ladder. Uh, that should be sufficient. So let's see, Ruby is not no longer feeling the pain. So I'm going to just going to put him up onto this uh, surface here so that uh, we don't introduce any sort of pathogens. Okay, so where are we going to insert the needle? Uh, basically, the goldfish, the swim bladders are always. Uh, ventral to the uh, to the spine and to get a gauge of where the spine is you have a look at the lateral line system and basically the spine is basically at that level uh, goldfish have got a cranial uh, which is near the head and a caudal which is near the tail swim bladder We've got two um, swim bladders uh, the caudal part is where that has that tube running to the esophagus to inflate and you can see uh, when we were floating the fish it was actually the caudal part of the swim bladder uh, that was float um, sticking out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in uh, from this angle towards the caudal swim bladder and we're just going to avoid the scales and then we're just going to go in there and we're just going to aim toward the spine. So here uh, we've just inserted the needle and you can see that I, I pull back on the plunger and it doesn't retract. Uh, that means I'm in the right location of the caudal swim bladder. Uh, so now we're just going to transfer him, Ruby, over to the fish tank. So we need uh, Ruby fully anesthetized still, uh, so that she doesn't he doesn't struggle. Uh, and you can see we've taken out maybe three mils of air, and she is basically yeah slightly negatively buoyant so I think that that's about uh, the estimate that I gave earlier three mils of air uh, that we need to remove from her swim bladder so once you've established that's the amount that you want to remove we'll take them out of the water again put some digital pressure on the insertion point withdraw your needle and some digital pressure there still and then we'll revive him in fresh water you can see he's negatively buoyed that's really good uh, but he doesn't sink like a rock that means there's sufficient air still in there um, to help him uh, with swimming so it doesn't feel too heavy uh, and now I guess he's still quite deeply anesthetized uh, no he's coming around yeah, and just leave him to it, his own devices, and he will wake up and start swimming again. So here's Ruby the right way up. Uh, he's looking like a, a new fish. So in terms of aftercare, uh, what we want to see is that he doesn't, it doesn't uh, recur, uh, basically, because he's been in this 
it's been chronically affected so it's likely that it, it could recur but um, yeah we'll have to keep an eye on, on him so it's not too too many things else that we need to do uh, we can give him some antibiotics just to cover because the inserting the needle that's always danger in introducing bacteria into the swim bladder causing uh, infection and things like that um, so yeah, apart from that I think he's good to go home and go back to his pond mates. Right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm Dr. Rich Menlo, the fish vet. Uh, for more similar videos, remember to subscribe. Uh, please do uh, send through your comments so I can hear whether how you found the videos. I hope you found that was interesting and informative. Uh, and look forward to seeing you again.